Hey guys and gals, it is July the 12th, it is Sunday, it's after 8 o'clock in the evening, and I'm making this because my pal Rudy asked on a face a, a book thread if we were still in Anderson and what the deal was, and I thought it'd be a good time to catch y'all up. Thursday night, I got a call from Freightliner, running Freightliner, that said that they think they got it resolved. They have taken the inverter out of the loop because the inverter was clicking. Now, I think it was because the house batteries were, were dead. But, <coughs> excuse me. Anyway, so they took the inverter out of the loop. They are charging the batteries, uh, the house batteries, and to, to eliminate the draw... And then they're going to test drive it Friday. And then by swing shift, it should be charged up and it should be ready to go. So we drive up there. We get there about 3.15 and I have my talk with them. And I pay the $1,900 bill and we uh, pull out and everything's fine so far. And my wife is in back of me and I turn right out of the driveway now, Market Street is about 200 yards up, and it's old U.S. 99, the l last U.S. 99 before I uh, the I-5 bypass to the east of Anderson and Reading was uh, built in the early 70s. Reading has now since expanded uh, towards I-5 and much east. Anyway, um... So I get to the stoplight and the volt gauge is already fluctuating. I'm thinking, well, this doesn't sound good, but maybe it's something I just don't know. So I wind it on to I-5 South and I'm on I-5 South and I'm going 65 and it dries uh, like a dream. And I get almost to the off ramp here at Anderson that I need and... The check train, uh, check train light comes on, limp mode, fourth gear. I get right off the freeway. I didn't even pull over or call my wife. She figured it out when, I, when my turn signal went on to get back on the freeway northbound. I drive it up the freight liner. I'm not yelling and screaming, but they can tell I'm really not happy. And my voice is calm and measured. I walked in. I dropped the keys on the counter. I said, I just spent $1,900, and I'm no further to being out of here than I was eight days ago. I'd like a phone call later. Now, hold on just a sec. My, my editing software won't take a, a clip over one gigabyte, and for some reason, uh, if it's almost eight minutes, it won't take the clip. So let me, shut, uh, let me make a second clip here. Well, hell, it was only 3 minutes and 32 seconds, so so I get a call Friday night, and it's late, it's, it's, you know, 12.30, and they tell me that they don't know what's wrong, they don't know what to do, so they're going to put what, in a sense, is a tape recorder or a black box like an airplane has, and trust me, y'all, your new car, and for a while now, have had the same type of stuff. So if you think you're going to speed on the freeway and, and, and have something happen, well, they're going to be able to see how fast you're driving based on the, on the cheater in the car. There's no way around this. Anyway, they're going to put a, a tape recorder on it, and then they're going to clear the code. They're going to get it on the freeway, and they're going to drive it till it fails. Well, it, it yeah, fails uh, in the lit mode. And then they're going to have not only the code, but engine speed, vehicle speed, uh, engine temp, voltage, oil pressure, oil temp, coolant temp, tranny temp. And, and they're going to have a lot more to work with. So they're going to send this now, and here's where they're not inspiring me. She says, we're going to send it to Cummins on Monday. And I asked her, why would you send it to Cummins? There's nothing made by them in my coach. And she says, yes, you have the 6.7 Cummins as a motor. 
And I said, no, I don't. I have the Caterpillar C7. And she says, well, no, you don't. And I'm thinking, you know, I'm not going to argue with her. I know what I have. I looked it up when I bought it. I did a bunch of reading on it. And now I'm thinking, if you don't know the type of motor I've got, how do I know you've got the right alternator on it? So I'm going to have to ask that. Anyway, so I, I dropped the keys off and, 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 and um, I'm, Jesus, I'm sorry. So we hang up. I, you know, I'm not going to argue with her. So if they run with this, they're going to do what they said they're going to do. They're going to drive it till the failure happens. They're going to have all this data. And if they really send it to Cummins, who is based in Detroit, they're eventually, when you, uh, when you go up their ladder, they're part of Fiat Chrysler. Um, they are going to laugh at them and say, you goddamn idiots don't even know it's, it's, not, it's not made by us. And then they're going to have to sheepishly, they'll never admit this, but they're going to have to go and, uh, and, and then contact Caterpillar or else actually uh, drive it up to the dealer of the Caterpillar, um, uh, the Caterpillar service people, which are literally up the street. So hopefully that will get done Monday if we can get an answer from the people at the factory, the engineers and the designers. I'm not upset with these uh, Freightliner people. I mean, you know, I'd like them to fix it, but if they're over their head, I'm glad that they're asking for help. I think that they've got a real interest in what is stumping all of them. And they're going to learn from this, as am I. If it ever happens again, I'm going to already have my ducks in a row. Anyway, when they get that data, hopefully they can fix it. And then I'll take it to Anderson Tranny, have him fix the leak, do the dash share, and maybe we'll leave Friday. So we're at least here for five more days. I'm not thrilled about it, but I have something to show you. So just hold on just a second. Let me, uh, and let me make a new clip. Our car is in the middle right there, that brown uh, Malibu with the dent that I put in in Salt Lake City. There was a, the empty spot to the left last night or two nights ago. Last night um, was a guy in a, like an older Pathfinder uh, by Nissan, the four-door SUV. And somehow he had let his car roll into the bushes. So... I was parked at the um, at the hydrant here, bringing in our um, our groceries from Walmart, and I noticed this. So I'm thinking, as I parked the the car a little bit more down the parking lot to the right, I'm thinking I'm going to go get my camera. And I'm going to I'm going to take a picture of this. Well, as I'm walking to the room, I notice that the driver is there. Sue said he had passed her in the hall on the way to the room. So, I watch him, and he's got his driver door open. Now, there's a car parked next to him on his left. And you know what happens here. He's too damn lazy to just get in and shut the door and do it right. So, he backs up with the door fully open, catches the door on the car, and you can hear, the, you can hear it go. <laughs> and he pulls up, doesn't even shut the door, just shuts it a little bit more. He's still got one leg hanging out. He backs up and drives away. And I'm thinking, my God, these people drive around this every day. Especially when myself and a few others of you rode motorcycles. God damn, they're goddamn, they're goddamn idiots everywhere. So here you go. Uh, I'll have more info for you when I know. There was maybe one or two things I... I made the tape at first. I found that I had muffled the microphone a touch, and I'm in over ten of about this. So I made another one, watched it, and thought, you know, I didn't quite flush it out enough. The problem is that there is a draw in the 12-volt DC chassis. Now, your alternator puts out 14.4 volts usually. So when you run your air or, number, or your stuff, you, you know, you know your, your fan or your wipers or, or, or whatever, that it doesn't draw under 12 volts and you have problems. Well, 
something is causing the draw and they they um, they they thought they had it fixed when they took the inverter out of the system now i forgot to tell you guys that they took it for a test drive friday and they drove it 40 miles and it ran fine so they thought they had it fixed so they did take it for a test drive um now the guys at gibbs and i think i said this in the last uh, film uh, the guys at Gibbs says that it's not the inverter, that the inverter does not possibly draw that much power. And it looks like they're right, because uh, a Freightliner took the inverter out of the lo uh, loop, and I still have the problem. So, even though I'm not thrilled with the guys at Gibbs, uh, 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 I think they're right here. So, that's one of the things that I wanted to say, that they did take it for a draw... Yeah, uh, that's... That's the two things, that they did take it for a test drive, and the deal is that something is drawing the voltage. And when you get under 12.2 volts in the Allison TCM, it goes in the limp mode and sends uh, the, uh, the codes. So something is wrong that there's not 12.2 volts going to the TCM, the Allison. And that's where we 